Good morning. Okay, so something just happened in the middle of teaching a class to three beautiful um, yogis who I'm going to be sending this to. Um, technical difficulties when trying to do yoga from a remote location, right? Um, internet in and out. Uh, I recognize how frustrated I was becoming teaching, how frustrated you all were becoming teaching. So I chose to just finish the class because yoga is all about relaxation and connection. And when you have a block like that, stopping you from being connected or stopping you from really feeling in the moment and into your own body, then how can you really be practicing yoga? So I'm here again. I'm going to start my practice again, the class that I was going to teach to my three beautiful yogis. And we are gonna start over. And we are gonna start from a different space, a different sense of energy and connection. So yoga teaches us sometimes that we, there are things that are gonna to happen to us beyond our control. That's life. And yoga is giving us the tools to be able to learn how to deal with these or learn how to react in a more calm and uh, peaceful manner as opposed to letting our sympathetic system come in and just really getting into that fight or flight system. So I have taken a few deep breaths. I am ready to restart and I hope that you all are too. So if you'll join me coming into a Sukhasana position, a seated posture in the center of your mat. And I want you to take the palms and face them up and come into Jhana Mudra, bringing your thumb and your pointer fingertip to touch and then floating the eyes closed. And then as you sit there with or without a block, I'm personally sitting on a block because it feels better for my hips, so you could certainly add a block under your tailbone. Notice if your shoulder blades are kind of curling forward and you're hunching forward, kind of becoming proud, right? Arrive into this space ready, open to receive. And as you float your eyes closed, start to soften the facial expressions, allowing your lips to press to one, towards one another, maybe releasing the tongue off the roof of the mouth. And starting to move into your breath, whether that's just a, a gentle, more natural breath, or you're moving right into your ujjayi pranayama. If there's any other type of breath work you'd like to move into first to help bring you into this moment. So with your eyes closed, take a few moments, scan through your body. Recognize those areas where you are holding your tension, where you may feel tight. Maybe an injury has occurred and you need to be a little bit more mindful into those spaces. So start to recognize what you're working with today. Every time we approach our mat, we are different. Our bodies are gonna feel differently in our movements. Our breath may move a little bit more fluid or not. So just noticing, noticing without attachment. rounds of breath here, starting to deepen the breath a little bit more, so seeing if you can, as you draw in, imagine that your body is like a balloon, your belly especially, and it blows up, it extends out in every which direction, filling it up even more, holding it at the top nice and full, and then exhaling, just kind of feeling and seeing that balloon that you use in your visual deflate back to that normal shape and then holding it empty at the bottom. And when you're ready for your next inhale, either drawing your thumbs to your third eye or heart center, a slight bowing as the chin works towards the chest and setting your intention. Letting the intention be the guide to all actions, breath work, thoughts throughout this practice. So 
but mainly allowing your body to fully connect to this intention so that when we do start to move, we connect more to the body and how the body wants to work less than the mind. And then blink the eyes open, maybe bring a smile to the face, just already recognizing that internal shift from craziness to peace. Inhale, arms will reach out and up towards the sky. And as we exhale, we're gonna just simply take a nice little twist. Take that left hand to the right knee, right hand to the base of the tailbone, zip up tall through the spine. And then reach that right bicep to ear. We're gonna take a nice side body stretch, reaching to the top left corner of your mat. So just breathing through that right side body, keeping grounded through the right sit bone. Gaze can be down if that feels better in your neck, straight forward or up towards that right arm. Inhale, slowly stack the spine, release the fingertips back down behind you for the twist. And then inhale, come back through center, arms will reach overhead. And then exhale, lower the fingertips down, remove the block out from underneath your sit bones if you have it. Walk the fingertips all the way out, bow down. So taking a moment here to ground down through the sit bones. Whatever shin bone you have in front is where you should be feeling your stretch. So keep drawing the sit bone back and reaching the fingertips forward for that elongation. Inhale from here, slowly walk your hands, stacking the spine once again, and switch out the shins. So take that opposite shin bone in front. Inhale, arms will reach up towards the sky. Twisting over to the left, right hand to the base of the tailbone, left hand back behind you, or right hand to the knee, excuse me. Right hand to the knee, left hand to the base of the tailbone. Sip up tall, lengthen through, look down past those left shoulders. And then next inhale, we'll reach the left bicep to ear, and then take your exalt, reaching to the top right corner of your mouth. Breathing through the left side body, nice little side stretches, especially down through the lower part of the hips. Inhale, stack the spine, release, and then come all the way back through center. Inhale, arms will reach up. Once again, taking that hip stretch because we switched out the shin bones, so now it's going to feel a stretch on the opposite leg. Bow down. Keep grounding down through the sit bones. Fully elongating through the spine as you stretch through the left hip flexor or whatever shin bone you have in front. Mine is left. Inhale from here slowly. Start to walk your hands back in. You're just going to simply come up onto the palms and then step back to a plank pose, or um, excuse me, downward facing dog. So settling into your downward facing dog, creating that shape in your body, breathing. Grounding down through the fingertip pads to feel a little bit of lightness through the wrists. Starting to feel that energy draw up through the arms and feel the biceps roll out, the triceps will roll in towards your ears and then slide the shoulders down and away. As you make your way through your down dog, notice are you holding tension in the neck? Maybe nod the head, yes, shake the head, no. Let that head hang truly, truly heavy. And then feel the hips lift up to feel the elongation of the torso drawing the navel to spine and then letting the energy draw down through the backs of the legs. Being okay if the heels don't touch. And then if you want to, you can bring a little bit of extra movement into the body so you can wiggle the feet, you can lift your heels, pedal the legs. Whatever feels good and natural to you. That is the beauty of yoga when we find our practice, when we really know what we're doing, then we can really customize each movement, each transition a little bit differently to how our body feels at that point in time. Starting to find that stillness in your downward facing dog once again. And then when you're ready for your next inhale, slowly come down to all fours, coming into a tabletop position. Releasing the tops of the feet onto the earth as you inhale, move into your cow spine. Tailbone lifts, gaze up. Exhale, press away from the spine, chin to the chest, feel the hips scoop forward. Again, inhale, belly draws down, tailbone lifts. Exhale, press away from the earth, chin to the chest. One more time, inhale here. And exhale. Inhale, come back to your neutral spine. And we're just going to wag our tail a little bit. So just taking the right hip over towards the right lowest rib cage. It's a little movement, nothing too major. But keep 
taking your shoulders over your wrist so you can feel the stretch through the left side body. And then swivel it over. Left hip, left lowest rib cage, shoulders in and move. I'm now feeling the stretch through the right, the connection and the contraction through the left. And then one more time on each side. Switch it over to the right, back through center, over to the left. Back through center. Inhale, coming into spinal balance. So maybe slide the left knee a little bit closer inside of the body. Right arm, or right leg is going to reach back behind you. Left arm can reach forward. You can always opt to keep the hand down if you need a little extra balance. Inhale from here, lengthen out. Exhale, draw the knee and the elbow in. Round the plank, shift it through. Good. Inhale, lengthen it out. Nice control movements. Exhale, draw it in. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, draw it in. Inhale, lengthen it out one more time. Option to keep the left arm lifted or lower the left hand down. You're going to draw that right arm and or right leg and arm out to a T. So inhale, draw everything out to a T. Extending the right leg out as far forward as you can and then draw back through center. And again, inhale, draw it out. Exhale, back through center. Try not to shift the weight as you extend out. And back through center. Inhale, draw it out and hold. Eight little pulses with the right leg. Draw it up. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower the left hand down. Start to bend into the right knee. Slide it in front of the left shin bone. And then sit back into Gomukhasana legs. Okay? So sitting back onto your sits bones. Right thigh is over the left. Option to walk your heels out a little bit wider if you have open hips. Or draw them in closer to your glutes if you have tighter hips. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. And then again, exhale, hinge the body forward. Once again, taking a deeper hip stretch here as you feel the weight of your upper body resting on top of the thighs. You can maybe just kind of let the head hang heavy. Just taking a moment and bowing forward. Uh, just stay there for another breath or two. Good. Inhale from here. Slowly lift and stack the spine. Excellent. We're going to just roll over our shins. Plant the hands down. Roll over the shins. Tuck the toes. Lift the hips up and back to your downward facing dog. But your right foot is in front. So it's a cross leg downward facing dog. Okay. Right foot in front. Heels are melting down towards the earth. Trying to straighten the legs as much as you can. And then you should feel a deep sensation through the right outer thigh and hip. Coming into that IT stretch. Inhale from here. Unwind the legs. Reach that right leg up towards the side. Three-legged dog. You can option to stay here or bend the knee heel to glute. Maybe move through a few hip mandalas. So feeling a little bit more rotation in the hips or keeping them squared for the hamstring stretch. Completely up to you guys. Remember, you have the choice to understand and to move in and out through different postures and what feels best to you. Extending out through the leg one more time into your three-legged dog, and then inhale, lifting through the left heel. Exhale, knee to nose, round the plank, shift all the way forward. Inhale, reach it up and back. Exhale, right knee, right tricep. Inhale, back. Exhale, cross it over to that left try. Try to feel the connection. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, knee to nose. Float the foot right in between the hands with control, bend back into that front knee. Three lunge pulses here. Dip the hips down so you feel the stretch through the left hip flexor. Exhale, straighten and bow over the right hip. Inhale, force the body forward, lift through the heart. Exhale, back. Slide that right hip underneath you, but move down through the right big toe. One more time. Inhale here. And exhale. Inhale, come back to the lunge. Root down through the feet. Inhale, lift. High crescent lunge. Good. So steeple the pointer finger, or um, actually, let's bring your thumbs to hook. Okay? So your thumbs are hooking. You're in your high crescent lunge. All I want you to do is reach the arms back behind you. We're not arching the spine for a heart opener. We're just reaching the arms back behind you just for more of a stretch to the shoulders. Remember which hook, which thumb you have hooked in front, because when we do it on the other side, we'll switch the grip. Inhale from here, release, exhale, hinge 
inch forward to cover off that front thigh. With control, lower the hands down, step it back to your plank pose. We're going to move through three Chaturanga Dandasanas. Option to drop the knees down. I'll do this first one with the knees down. Release the tops of the feet. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale to higher modify. Exhale, Chaturanga. Good. Inhale to lift. Exhale, lower down, Chaturanga. Hold. Scoop it through to your cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe. Notice heart rate comes up a little bit with that upward facing dog. The chaturangas. See if you can slow it back down with that out breath. Taking one more breath here in your downward facing dog. Can you ground down through the big toes and kind of feel your heels slightly widen out? When we do that, we feel a little bit more release through the sits bones. Taking a little pressure off those SI joints. And then when you're ready, drop down to the knees, table cow position. One cat and cow here, belly draws down, gaze lifts. Exhale, press away, round. Inhale, come back to your neutral spine. Spinal balance, slide the right knee and shin in center of the body. The left leg's going to reach back behind you. Strong lifted leg. And there's no openness of the hip, right? So you're not opening up the hip so the toes are reaching out to the side. It's down. Navel to spine, and then when you're ready, reach the right arm forward. Keeping your gaze slightly down and forward to keep that elongation and also to keep your drishti for focus. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, draw the knee and the elbow in, round the plank. Or round the plank balance. Inhale, extend it out. Exhale, draw it in. Keep zipping the heel towards the glute. Keep the leg active. Inhale, lengthen it out. Exhale, draw it in. Inhale, lengthen it out, hold, flex that left foot. Option to lower the right hand down. We're going to inhale, draw the leg and the arm out to a T, trying to keep it hip height. Inhale, draw it back through center. Exhale, T it out. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, T it out. Inhale, back. Exhale, T it out. Option to lower the hand down and pulse it up. Eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. Lower that right hand down. Bend into the left knee. Go mukasana the legs. Cross that left thigh over the right. Split the legs and sit back onto the floor or grab your block. Walk those heels out if you want a little bit more away from the hips for a little more sensation if you need it. Inhale, sit up tall. As you exhale, walk the fingertips forward. Bow down. Okay? So kind of, again, using that upper body as an added weight. Trying not to let the lift, the sits bones lift. Keep them grounded down. Keep pulling the heart forward. Keep present with your breath. Good. One more breath here. Notice those sensations, the flags that your body's giving you in this deep stretch. And then from there, continue to walk all the way forward onto the palms. Go ahead and tuck the toes. Lift those hips up into your Cross leg downward facing dog. So the left leg is in front now. Heels are melting down. Ground down through the palms, exactly what we did in a regular downward facing dog. Just this time we're drawing the left hip back. A little bit more sensation through the left thigh. And then inhale from here, sweep that left leg up towards the sky. Three legged dog, hip square, or bend the knee, heel to glute open. Maybe rotate. Circle it around a couple times one way. that leg out, squaring off those hips once again. Right? Really recognizing the difference in sensation, squared and open hips and downward facing dog. Inhale to lift through the left heel, exhale knee to nose. Inhale up and back. Exhale left knee, left tricep. Inhale. Cross it over, right try. Inhale up and back. Exhale knee to nose with control. Take your time. There's no rush. Step the foot all the way through. Readjust the body as needed. So again, we make sure that the knee's over the ankle. Inhale, dip the hips, lift the heart. Exhale, straighten and bow. And again, inhale, dip the hips, but not bend into the knee. Don't release the back leg. Keep it active. Exhale, straighten. One more time. Inhale here. And exhale. 
inhale, pour the weight forward, ground down through those feet, and then root to rise. Come all the way up to stand, using the core and the inhale to lift you high crescent lunge. So again, we're coming back into that hooking of the thumb. Take that opposite thumb. So if it feels natural to do it, switch it up, because you probably did the natural one first. Inhale when you're ready, draw the front ribs down, and then just reach those arms back behind you. No openness of the spine, just the sensation more so through the shoulders, even that bend into that front knee. Inhale here, charge the body forward, hover off that front thigh. You can release the bind of the thumbs and take the hands shoulder distance. Exhale, lower the hands down, set the back plank pose, or drop the knees down for your modification. Three more chaturanga dandasanas. Inhale, shift forward, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, high plank or modified, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale to lift, exhale, chaturanga, hold. Scoop it through cobra or up dog. With control, full exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale from here, ground down, open up the mouth. Exhale, release anything that's not serving you, any judgments, expectations. Let it go. Inhale to lift through those heels, look up to the top of the mat. You can tippy toe, walk, step, hop, or float, finding your way to the forward fold, top of the mat. Feet come hip distance. Inhale, lift up, halfway lift, pull the heart forward. Exhale, dip in your fold. Stay here for a moment or two. Option to bend the knees, maybe hang in ragdoll. If you need a little bit more open to the front of the shoulders, maybe clasp the hands behind the low back and extend the knuckles forward. Again, always in a forward fold. We don't have to straighten our legs. Sometimes it puts a little bit too much pressure on the hamstrings or on the low back, or extension on the hamstrings, pressure on the low back. So a soft bend will help release some of that. Any bind of those arms or ragdoll, slowly release them back down towards the earth. And then root to rise, come to stand. Either reverse your swan dive or roll up vertebrae by vertebrae. Reaching those arms overhead. And then exhale, hands to heart center. Pause here for a moment, floating the eyes closed. First time truly standing, both feet onto the earth, crown of the head lifted and pausing with the eyes closed. Take a moment to feel grounded, to feel present. Find that inner connection that we all so desire and that we all truly need for growth, for awareness, for change. Next inhale, reach those arms out and up, palms to press, maybe sway off. Exhale, swan or bow all the way down, forward fold. Inhale, lift up, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the palms, step back to plank pose. Lower down, one chaturanga, or modified. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Good, moving through two more rounds. As you inhale, lift your heels, looking up to the top of the mat. Walk, step, hop, or float. Finding your way to the top of the mat with ease. Inhale, lift up halfway, lift your hands, can slide up cushions or stay to the earth. Exhale, bow down. Inhale, root to rise, come all the way up to stand. Palms to press overhead, maybe off. Exhale, hands to heart center, ground down. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, swan or bow. Inhale, lift up, halfway lift. If your feet aren't already touching, go ahead and bring them to touch. Exhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. So feet are together, knees, inner thighs, ankles, squeezing everything into the midline, navel drawing in to support the spine. Sit down a little bit deeper, maybe lifting your toes so your weight truly is into your heels. You should be able to see the toes. Inhale here, exhale, hold it forward, let it go. Inhale, lift up, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the palms, step it back to plank, drop the knees or float right to your chaturanga as you exhale. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Heart rates should be starting to get up here just a little bit. Inhale, lifting through those heels, looking up to the top of the mat. 
Exhale, walks up, hop, float, shakti, whatever feels right to you. Be mindful to move through the body, not through the mind. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, deepen your fold. Inhale, root to rise, come all the way up to stand. Weight stays forward to the balls of the feet, awesome. And draw that positive energy into the heart space. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, swan or bow. Inhale, lift up, halfway lift. Again, feet to touch, Utkatasana, chair pose. Sink the hips back. Don't let the tailbone flare out. Keep it neutral, but draw in the navel of the spine to support the spine. Inhale from here, sit down a little bit deeper. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, lift up, halfway lift. Either take your vinyasa or move through crow prep or crow pose. So, palms can stay down to the earth. Slide the knees into the backs of the triceps. Start to chatter under the arms as you look forward. Press down through the palms so much that you start to feel the upper body start to round. So you're drawing the heart up and in, and then maybe lift one of those heels. Zipping the heels towards the glutes. Very much a lot of the hamstrings here. Good, and then inhale from here. Step it back or float it back. Even if your heels don't ever come off the earth, that's totally fine, okay? Just move into the prep. Exhale. Inhale, up dog. Or go. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a moment here. Down dog or child's pose. Just about three breaths to ground yourself back down. To bring the heart rate slower. It's not going to be as slow as when we found it in the beginning of the practice. But hopefully those sun salutations, maybe the offering of different things started to bring, to elevate that heart rate. Coming back to your intention. When you're ready, finding your way back to your downward facing dog. Good, and then on the next inhale, go ahead and sweep that right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, right knee, right tricep. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, cross it over. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, making your way into our warrior one. So you can come knee to nose, heel out, or scissor switch. Right leg comes all the way forward. Back heel spirals down. So nice wide stance with your warrior one. They should be about hip distance. Arms are reaching up towards the sky. Deep bend into that front right knee. And I want you to equally root through the outer blade of that left foot. Not the inner arch, the outer blade. Okay? Sliding that left hip, rolling it forward. Inhale, add in and exalt from here. So your right hand's going to reach back for the left hamstring. Inhale, lift up and out of the spine. Gaze up towards the side. That feels good. You can always keep it down if that feels better. Inhale, arms are going to reach back up to warrior one. Open it out, warrior two. Good. So tiptoe that right foot in the center of the back arch. Good. Deep bend into that right knee. Arms are strong right in the center of the body. Moving through three flying warriors. So ground down through the ball of the right foot. Arms are reaching up. Exhale, take it right back down. Again, inhale, arms reach. Feel that strength happening in the legs. Exhale, arms out, strong. Good, again, inhale. So you can gaze up, which will challenge your balance. Exhale, down. One more time, inhale, arms reach up. Turn those right toes. Exhale, high skandasana. Bending into the left knee, walking the fingertips out or you certainly can come into your low skandasana, rotating those right toes and knees and thighs up towards the sky. So feeling the rotation from the hip, not from your ankle or knee joint, from the entire thigh down. Hands to your heart center if you're in the low skandasana. Feeling the stretch, feeling the moment of gratitude and stillness. Taking one more breath here. And then moving into a twisted dragon lunge at the top of the mat. So either walk your fingertips all the way over or use the strength of the low body to lift you up through. Plant the left hand down, right arm reaches up towards the sky. Scissor those inner thighs. We're moving into water wheel from here. Inhale when you're ready. Slowly start to lift and stack the spine. You can either stay here or if that's too much, drop the back knee down. Let those right fingertips reach back, back. Good, inhale from here. 
Exhale, window the hands down to bring off that front foot and sweep that right leg up towards the sky. Inhale, left heel lifts. Exhale, left knee, left or right knee, right tricep. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, right knee, right tricep. Same leg, same elbow. Inhale. Exhale, hold it here. Feel the connection knee to tricep. Option to start to shadow under the arms. Maybe take flight at the bottom. Taking your vinyasa from here. Either step back to your planker. Inhale, three-legged dog. Taking your vinyasa. Yogi's choice. Take it or leave it. Taking a breath here. Full deep inhale. And full deep exhale. Inhale, left leg's going to sweep up towards the sky. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, reach it up and back. Exhale, left knee, left tricep. Inhale, back. Exhale, cross it over. Be mindful. If you're not with my cueing, with my, my breath, that's totally fine because you're different, right? Inhale when you're ready, warrior one. Knee to nose, heel L or scissor switch. Left leg's coming forward. Back heel is spiraling down, root to rise, come all the way up to stand. Let your breath be the guide to the movements. My cueing is just my cueing. Allow yourself to go at your own pace. Add in an exalt from here. Left hand's gonna reach back for the right hamstring. Lift up and out of the spine, fall through your foot. Deepen that bend into that left knee. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, open it up, warrior two. So left leg is forward, warrior two. Arms are strong. Flying warriors, here we go, root to rise. Inhale, lift, palms to press. Exhale, take that energy right back down. Inhale, lift. Exhale. Last two, inhale. And exhale. Last one, inhale here. Turn the left toes. High or low skandasana. So you can start off in the high valley and down, see how that feels. Or you can rotate from that left thigh bone all the way down to let the tailbone come down towards the earth. And it's just hovering, right? And then you're pressing the right elbow against the right knee if you're in the low skandasana. If you're in the high skandasana, you're walking the fingertips out even further like you were in downward facing. Good, one more full breath here. Noticing if your breath's starting to get a little choppier. See if you can slow it back down. Coming back into that twisted dragon lunge with or without those hands as a little help. Right hand's gonna stay down, back heel. Right heel's gonna lift off the floor as you lift the left arm to the sky. Preparing for your twisted dragon. So scissor the inner thighs. Reach through those left fingertips as you inhale, lift and stack the spine. Again, option to drop that back right knee down if you need the modification. Keep reaching back through those fingertips. Keep trying to stack yourself over those hips. Inhale here. Exhale, windmill the hands down, frame off that front foot, and sweep that left leg up towards the sky. Inhale here. Exhale, left knee, left tricep. Inhale up and back. Exhale forward. Inhale, lift. Exhale, draw forward, hold it here, or start to chatter in the arms, or take flight. Back leg lift, sits up off the floor, pulling the heart forward. Vinyasa from here, so you can step back to plank, or move through your three-legged dog. Exhale. Meeting knee and down, dog or child's pose whenever you're ready. Take a moment, scan through your body once again, whether you're in down dog or child's pose. Starting to feel that shift, right? We walked onto our mats this morning, we felt heavy, we felt probably some stress, whether it's quarantine life or stress from kids, school, family, whatever the case may be. Notice how you're starting to feel a little bit lighter, a little bit spacious. You find gratitude in that. And continue with this practice through that dedication and commitment to relieve
releasing all that is unnecessary within your body, your energy, your thoughts, and your emotions. So take a full deep inhale, fill through the belly, the lungs, the heart. Open up the mouth and exhale. Sigh it out, lion's breath, flutter the lips, whatever you need to do just to release. Let's take two more just like that. Inhale to fill. Open up the mouth. Release. One more. Inhale. And exhale. Finding your way back into your downward facing dog if you took any other expression or any other posture. Settling into that space. Inhale, right leg will sweep up towards the sky. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, left knee, or right knee, right tries that. Inhale, sweep it up and back. Exhale, cross it over to that left, try. Extend the leg out, either moving into your fallen triangle, spiraling the back heel down, left arm reaches up towards the sky, or if you'd like to, you can certainly take your at the pot of one, your nice side balance or arm balance here. Inhale, slowly release, plant the left hand down, sweep the right leg back up towards the sky. So coming into high crescent lunge, again, knee to nose, step it through, or if you'd like to play with your scissor switch, right leg's gonna reach up and then fall forward. Back foot's gonna ball down, inhale, room to rise. Again, only trying those transitions if you are in a place in your yoga journey where you feel strong enough and committed enough to do so, or if you have support. Hands to, actually we're going to come into eagle. So reach that left arm forward first, right on top. Bring those palms to press, okay? So right on top. Lift those arms up and press the elbows forward. Beautiful. Moving into warrior three with this eagle bind. Shift forward, core the weight forward, back leg sits up off the floor. Keep drawing the navel in, dropping that left hip down, but pressing the energy out through the left heel. Moving into full eagle here. Inhale, lift, crossing that left thigh over the right. Option to keep those right toes, or left toes, excuse me, close to the earth, okay, touching. Or if you can take the double bind. But squeeze the inner thighs to touch like we did in our water wheel. Sit down a little bit deeper. Option to stay here upright or Start to round through that upper back, trying to take the elbows to your thighs, coming into a bowing eagle. Inhale from here, slowly start to lift. Unwind everything, reach those arms up towards the sky, reach that left leg straight out in front of you. We're coming into a revolved half moon from here. Right hand's gonna come to your hip, left arm's gonna stay lifted. Sweep the leg back and lower your hand to the block or floor. I love the block on this. So I personally love the block because it brings an extension of the front side body. When I'm down here hanging, it doesn't give me that. It makes for much more difficult of a twist. So roll the right shoulder back. Keep sliding the right hip back. Left hip will naturally pull forward to square off. Pressing out through that right heel. Option to reach that right arm up towards the side. Few more breaths here. Staying strong through that lifted left leg. Warrior two, when you're ready, slowly lower the right hand down, bend into that left knee, and windmill those arms open. Warrior two with the right leg forward. You might need to extend out your stance a little bit for wider. Good, inhale, flip through the right palm. Exhale, add your exalt. Inhale, back to two. One more exalt. This time we're going to prepare for a triangle. So inhale, exalt it back. Straighten through that right leg now. Feel even more elongation. And then inhale to lift. Option to walk that back foot in slightly to shorten your stance. Inhale, reach through those right fingertips as far as you can. Sliding this right hip back and underneath you. Good. And then lower the right hand down to your block, your shin, or the floor. Left arm reaches to the Feeling that elongation of the left side body, option to take that left hand into that right pocket. The right side body, excuse me, right side body. So you can stay here with a half bind. 
Maybe you want to try to play with using a little bit more strength of the right side body by maybe bringing that right hand to your heart. Maybe reaching those right fingertips forward. That's a little too intense on the spine sometimes and we'll go back on the lumbar so you can certainly just bring your hand to heart or keep it down. Take one more breath here. Inhale from here, slowly start to release back to your warrior two. Stepping up to the top of the mat to find your chair pose once again. As we come into our chair, hands into heart center, take that left elbow outside of that right thigh, and once again, taking a nice little twist to the right. So often, you can keep the left knee, allowing that left knee to pull forward just a little bit to lessen the ring on the low back, and that, especially if you have low back injuries, or you can keep them parallel. You can maybe open up your arms to 12 and 6, maybe take that right hand into the back pocket for a little twist, or if you want to move into your side crow, you certainly can plant your palms onto the earth, Start to chatter into the elbows, pull the heart forward, and zip the heels towards your glutes. Keep looking forward. You don't want to look back behind you. You want to look forward. Now, you can either have your entire right thigh resting on both of your elbows, or you can have it just resting on the left and the right elbow hanging out in chaturanga. Maybe a little easier for you, maybe a little bit more challenging. Maybe you want to extend the legs out, straight out, or straight leg side pro, or extend. Or move into your apicata from there. Good. Slowly, whatever you are playing with, if you want to continue to play, go for it. If not, we're going to slowly make our way back into that twisted chair, where we're going to exhale, fold it all forward, and let it go. Walk your feet out a little bit wider than your hips. Soft bend to the knees and just let your upper body sway from side to side. Good. Coming back through center, inhale, lift up halfway lift. Tiptoe your feet either hip distance or back to touch. We're taking our vinyasa from here. So plant the palms. If you want to add a crow pose, go for it. Crow to headstand, back to crow, go for it. Take your vinyasa, skip your vinyasa, or even if you want to play with a few L hops, you can go ahead and lift the left leg. Inhale here, exhale, try to find your L, try to find your heel kick, whatever feels good to you. If none of that is in your practice, then just take your standard vinyasa or skip it all, down dog or child's pose. Remember, you have the choice. You have the choice to let this practice be exactly what you need it to be, whether that's super challenging, or scaling back and using it as a little bit more of a restore and just flow the energy. Finding your way into your downward facing dog. Take a full deep inhale. Full deep exhale. Before we move on to the other side, just walk your hands back to meet your feet at the back of the mat for just a moment. Make sure your feet are hip distance. Grab a two finger grip, hold up the big toes, inhale, pull the heart forward, look forward. Weight into the big toe so you feel the sit bones widen out just a little bit. The heels kind of slide out just like an eighth of an inch, nothing big. Exhale, bend with the elbows and come into your body and sasana. Option again, you can keep that bend into the knees if it seems to be too much of a strain on the hamstrings or the low back. You just want to feel the spine be long. You want to feel the crown of the head hang heavy. And you want to use the guidance, the strength of those arms to kind of Feel that gentle draw in of the heart. So still strong, but yet passive. Slowly release, lift up halfway, lift, look out, lengthen. Walk your hands out to plank pose. You can option to take a vinyasa, or you can just hang out in plank pose, or you can rock it right through to your shadow under there. Here we go. Last side. Inhale, left leg sweeps to the sky. Exhale, knee to moose. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, left knee, left tricep. Inhale, reach. Exhale, cross it over to that right tri. Extend the foot out. Option to stay here. 
fall in triangle, if you want to play with your arm balance or any other variation, go ahead and give your body what it wants here. I'm going to hang on to this fall in triangle because it feels good. Moving back to your three-legged dog, planting the right hand back down. Inhale, sweep that right leg up towards the sky. Coming into your warrior one. Again, knee to nose, heel, L, or scissor. Trying to mirror what you did on the other side so that you find balance. Unless you have limitation with an injury. High crescent lunge. Glute to rise. Reach through those fingertips. Engage. Right arm's going to come out first. Left on top now. Guard us in the arms. Lifting those arms up. Pressing the elbows forward. Moving into that warrior three. Slowly hinge the body forward. Peel off that back leg as you pour the weight forward. Squaring off those hips. Soft bend into that left knee if needed. Good. Warrior three. Inhale, glutes rise. Come all the way up. Or excuse me, eagle through warrior three. Cross that right thigh over the left. Either keep the toes down and touch them or scissor everything and squeeze it towards the midline and take that deeper variation. So you're looking at your forearms and a strong drissy here, but yet soften the face muscles around it. Option to stay here, lifted, or slowly, mindfully bow down. Keep that calm effect, even though this is super challenging. Good, inhale, slowly start to lift. Unwind everything, legs gonna reach straight out in front of you, arms are gonna reach up towards the sky first. And then your left hand is gonna come to your left hip. Inhale from here, revolved half moon. Lower those right fingertips down to the block or floor. Keeping that right hip square, so dropping it down, scissor the inner thighs. Left hand to your hip, you can find the rotation, roll through here first, and then maybe left arm to sky. Go ahead, maybe gaze up. Good. One more breath here. With control, warrior two. Start to bend into that left knee. Lift as you rotate that right hip open and come into your warrior two. Good. So warrior two. Deep bend into that left knee. Arms are strong. Inhale, flip through. Exhale, add that exhaust. Left bicep to ear, deepen into that left knee. Inhale, back to warrior two. One more exalt as we inhale, exalted back, hold it. Straighten through that left leg, and then prepare for triangle. Inhale, lift and stack. Walk that right foot in slightly. Reach those fingertips all the way out as far forward as you can. Then lower your hand down to the block, your shin, or the floor. Right arm up, okay? So we don't want to just dump all of our energy down into the left side body. We want to maintain that length. Option to take that right hand into your back pocket, opposite hip crease. Okay. Maybe try to bring that left hand to your heart or left bicep to ear. And again, as you come into this posture, noticing if you're flaring your tailbone out, keep trying to root it down towards that back right heel. Soften. Slowly release the arms, lifting back to your warrior two, and then stepping back up to the top of the mat. So, um, Tadasana first, and then exhale, chair pose. Hands are gonna come to your heart center. We're gonna take that twist, right elbow outside of that left thigh. Trying to roll that right rib cage forward and through. Option to keep the knees parallel, or again, letting the right knee pull forward just a smidge. Maybe open up those arms to 12 and 6. Half bind. Plant the hands down. Side pro with both um, that left thigh on both of the elbows or the left elbow out to the side. Start to channel in the arms. Pull the heart forward. Sit the heels towards your feet. Option to extend the legs straight out or take your Takapata variation. Stay in the moment. Stay with your breath. Do what you can do. 
advice that you should follow every single time you come to the mat. One more breath to play, or just stay in your chair, twist it a little bit deeper. Good, and then inhale from here. Exhale, hold it all forward and let it all go. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, deepen your fold. Inhale, one more time, halfway lift. Preparing for your vinyasa, yogi's choice. Again, step it back, float it back, hop. Maybe move through your crow to headstand to crow back. Or play with your inversions. Remember, it's toward the end of the practice. Our body starts to get fatigued. And when our body starts to get fatigued, our ego kind of tries to step in. It tries to step in and say, hey, hold on a sec. You should be doing this. You did it before. You've done it before on the mat. You should be doing this. That's when you just kind of let that ego go. Really listen to how your body feels and what it needs. Not your mind and your ego. Good, making your way back into your downward facing dog. We're coming up to the top of the mat one more time. So again, you can tippy toe, walk, step, or hop. Listen to the body. Inhale, lift up halfway, lift, tiptoe your feet all the way to touch. Exhale, one last chair pose, not here long though. We're gonna take it down for a count of eight, seven, six, Four, three, two, and one. Lower all the way down. Take the soles of those feet onto the floor. Fingertips in front of the shin bones. Move through a few seated cat and cows here. Inhale, lift through the heart space. Exhale, press away. Draw the chin down towards the chest. And again, inhale, lift through the heart. Gaze up. Exhale, press away. Round. One more time. Inhale here. And exhale. Inhale, come back through center. Walk your feet all the way to touch. Fingertips straight forward. Exhale, hinge back. You can either keep your feet down if your low back is just not having it. You can lift up for Ardha Navasana or full Navasana. Good. Hold it here. Using a little bit more of a forward shift into the pelvis. Lifting your legs using more of the hip flexors and psoas to keep the legs lifted as well as the core. We're going to take four extensions. You can also lower the fingertips down. Actually, a lot of this takes six. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Inhale, extend out. Exhale, lift. Inhale. And exhale. So again, you can lower the fingertips down. Inhale and keep them down. Exhale, lift. Whose hero are you? You're yours. And when you listen to yourself, you're even more the hero. Lift it up. Inhale from here, slowly lower all the way down. Release those feet, reach those arms overhead. And when you reach, go ahead and lift up through your hips to kind of release the low back or the glutes back onto the earth. And then hug the knees into the chest and gently rock from side to side. Now massage that to the low spine out. And then taking those soles of the feet onto the floor. Windshield wiper the knees, but I want you to pause for the first one on each side. So as you let your knees fall over to the right, I want you to feel about lifting up through that left hip so you feel more of a stretch and a release through the left hip flexor. And then slowly release over to the left. Draw that right hip up a little bit more. You can either kind of just stay taking it slow or you can just move gently windshield wiper the knees from side to side. And then letting the knees fall all the way over to the right, letting that left knee stack on top of the right and take your gentle twist. Extending the left arm out, gaze down past those left fingertips, keeping the eyes closed. If you can opt to stay here, you can extend that left leg long. If you extend the leg, maybe you want to try to reach around, keep that right knee bent, grab the top of the foot, and then draw it back down. Cat catching its tail. I can never say that one right. Keep the left shoulder drawn down, though, if you're going to take this variation. If it's popping up, then maybe it's a little too deep for you today. 
Inhale, slowly draw everything back through center. Legs straight on up towards the sky. Palms down by your sides or underneath your hamstrings. We're just going to take eight times to lift and lower the legs. As you inhale, lower the legs down to where the low back never comes off the earth. Exhale to lift. Inhale down. Stay grounded through the low back. If it lifts, you're going down too high. Or too low, excuse me. Inhale down. Exhale to lift. Good. Inhale. And exhale. Four more. For four. Full breath. Exhale. Draw it back through center. Inhale for three. Exhale. Inhale for two. And exhale. Last one. Good. And exhale. Knees into the chest. Let them fall over to the left. Gaze down past the right. And try to mirror what you did on the other side. Did you extend that left leg or right leg out? Go ahead and do that. If you want to take that other variation, grab the top of that left foot and draw that right shoulder back down towards the earth. Keep grounding down through both of your shoulders. And then let the low body take. Settling into the breath, slowly back down. Slowly release. Coming back through center. Coming into a happy baby from here. So go ahead and reach those legs up towards the sky. First feel that elongation of the low back. Then start to bend into those knees. Reach for the outer blades of the um, feet as your elbows hug inside of the shin bones. So lower the low back firmly into the earth by rooting the tailbones down. Option to stay here in stillness or gently rock from side to side. Nice slow movement. Starting to calm the body back down. This is beautiful for our nervous system. Option to stay here. If you want to move into a static baby, you can maybe flip the grip and take that straddle stretch. Maybe you want to come into a floating butterfly, reaching the outer blades of your feet together, or the soles of your feet together fully, and then letting the knees fall out. If there's anything else your body is craving, go ahead and give it what it wants. Last few breaths here. Bridge, or just kind of stay where you're at, or eventually, whenever you're ready, moving into your final rest. Whatever that looks like and feels like to, do, to you, whether you want to be in a traditional Shavasana, some corpse pose, maybe you want to find your way to your wall and put your legs up the wall, maybe you want to come into a step two Bandasana. But allow yourself to find that space. If you are a woman, maybe you want to take your hair out of whatever hair tie you're in and just kind of let your head really rest. Maybe massage your head, guys. And then eventually, ah, let those arms come out wide. Let the fingertips naturally curl in. Notice if you have the sense of crowding the shoulder blades Roll the shoulders forward and then melt them back down. And take a moment and simply scan through your body, observe. We are always still holding tension when we arrive into this space. So taking a moment to recognize where that place is for you, whether it's in your shoulders, your fingertips, your thighs. And just notice. Can you release there? Can you let that area become heavy? We have no more work to be done here other than stillness and restoration. So if you find yourself too much in your mind, give yourself full permission for relaxation, full permission to quiet the mind. We 
can choose not to hold on to any thoughts. And that typically is our pattern. We think about something, we overthink. Try not to let that happen. You can let yourself find that stillness and embrace it. Welcome to your shell.
As we close off our class, the light within me humbly, humbly bows to the light within each and every one of you who show up for yourselves and dedicate time to yourself and to your practice. Until I see you all again, the light within me, yes, humbly, beautifully bows to the light within you again. Namaste. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And thank you again for going with the flow and knowing that things are always going to come up and show up for us. It's how we um, adapt to them and act, react to these situations that really make us feel peace. So thank you guys so much. One love.